evening. Welcome everyone to the June 5th meeting of the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board. My name is Rachel Zenberry. I'm the chair of the Redevelopment Board and I'm calling this meeting to order. Um, first thing I'd like to do is for my fellow board members to introduce themselves. Steve Rebelak. Eugene Benson. Ken Lau. And we have joining us also the um, uh, 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 Claire Ricker from the Department of Planning and Community Development, the director. And uh, let's launch right into our meeting this evening. So uh, the first item on our agenda is, uh, excuse me, in the back, if you can't hear me, please let me know. I know that the HVAC can be a little bit loud, so if you need us to speak up, please don't hesitate to let us know. Or move up to the front. Or move, or move up, up to the, the front, front, either way. Um, so the first item on our agenda is the public hearing for docket number 3752, uh, Cowick Peak, 251 Summer Street. And I will hand it over to Claire, as I understand that they have asked for a uh, continuance of this hearing to our next meeting date, which is June 26th. That is correct. Thank you, um, Rachel. On um, Thursday, I spoke with the proponent um, at um, 251 Summer Street, um, and we came to mutual agreement, uh, the department and um, the applicant. Um, that this project would be better served by postponing it um, two weeks um, to allow for the department to, um, you know, uh, more clearly, I think, uh, with more details, write the planning memo that is related to this project um, and for the applicant to have um, a little more time um, looking at the site with the current property owner. So we will be postponing um, until the 26th at 7.30 in this same room. Great, so I will um, first run through the uh, members of the board to see if there are any uh, comments or questions, starting with Steve. I do have a question. Yes. Um, I have never done one of these hearings before, so yes. I was wondering if um, someone could clarify the select board's role and our role with respect to permitting the use, and is it possible to obtain copies of the documents that the select board use when making their decision? Uh, sure, I can, uh, Claire, if you wanted to, to start and then I can fill in. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't you please go oh, ahead oh, and answer that, Rachel. Okay, Thank I'll you. go ahead and start. <laughs> so, um, Ken, I believe that you were part of the commission that reviewed the um, original. The last two. The last two applications. Um, but the select board is responsible for um, permitting the host, um, the host agreement. Uh, so that is basically identifying the location and the um, ability for them to seek a uh, permit for this project. So the redevelopment board's role is not to identify that this is um, the correct location with regard to meeting the requirements of the um, the marijuana um, business laws in terms of uh, siting, uh, but to ensure that the actual project as proposed um, is appropriate in its design for mm -hmm. the neighborhood. Okay. Anything to add to that, Claire? No, I think um, I just have one thing to add. This board does not adjudicate the use um, for a, a, a marijuana dispensary. This board only weighs in on the design of the facility um, and other um, planning issues related to the development itself. But the use is determined, allowed, permitted by the select board. If, if I could give Please, Jean. a little more nuanced <coughs> view, we still have to determine that it meets the special permit Correct. criteria and the environmental design review okay. criteria, plus the criteria in section 8.3, I think, of the zoning bylaw, which is about the marijuana mm -hmm. facilities. But the host community agreement is what is uh, is what adjudicated by the select board. And okay. that's how they cool. figure out how much money they're going to get from <laughs> the dispenser. Thank you for that for those clarifications. Absolutely, Jean. Any questions or comments before we vote on the um, no. continuance? Ken, any questions or comments? No. Um, so with that, is there a motion to continue the public hearing for 251 Summer Street, 
to uh, the next redevelopment board meeting, which will be on Monday, June 26th at 7.30 p.m. I so move. Second. Second. Great, we'll take a vote starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I am a yes as well. That is now um, continued to June 26th. All right, uh, with that, we will move to our second agenda item. Uh, we'll have actually public comment at the end of our um, uh, open forum will be agenda item number f number five and then we um, are happy to take questions although I will note that we cannot comment on um, any specifics related to this um, to the first agenda item the public hearing uh, because it has not been presented to us and we have not had Uh, I would bring that up during open forum, please. The end, two hours or? <laughs> uh, the end will be in about 45 minutes, probably. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and you are more than welcome to email any questions you have as well. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let's see. Uh, the second agenda item is MBTA Communities Update, uh, and I will turn it over to Claire. Great. Thank you. So. Um, the MBTA Communities Working Group has been very diligently meeting to review materials that have been provided by um, our consultant, UTIL, um, as well as uh, results of a survey that went out um, right after our last uh, full public hearing on, or excuse me, full public meeting on March 9th. We got um, over a thousand responses to that survey. Um, and when we, um, you know, gave uh, some of the survey results or preliminary survey results to our consultant to be mapped. Um, and uh, this board has seen and the working group has seen a few iterations um, of that map. Um, we have seen um, initially uh, mapping of three family um, homes, residential projects uh, across a swath of Arlington um, in, in, in two uh, configurations. Um, I received this afternoon a, a fourth draft um, of this map. Uh, the working group, the last time we met, uh, discussed let's look at a map with um, uh, some more, with more density than just say the three families across um, Arlington. And so uh, this is sort of hot off the presses. This is a, another stab at um, looking at three commercial areas, uh, East Arlington, Arlington Center, and the Heights, and looking at what a zone um, would look like uh, as we mapped, say, six families, 12 families, um, residential development with, a, with slightly more density than the, um, the maps that we had seen before. And like I said, I got these about three o'clock this afternoon. Um, related to this, I also received the table, um, this sort of shows how um, UTIL came up with this uh, latest zone. Um, again, looking at uh, developments with uh, more density, um, some larger scale developments, and then trying to determine the size of the zone um, from there. Now, these are, again, working documents um, that the working group will see tomorrow night um, at their meeting. Um, and discuss, you know, how to best and uh, present this um, in our public meeting on uh, Thursday the 8th. So Thursday the 8th at 7.30 um, in this room, we will be having our second um, public meeting related to this project. Um, and you can see here uh, some of the maps that you've seen before have shown, you know, um, bigger uh, districts, I think, across more stretches of the town. Um, this example avoids uh, local historic districts, um, which I think is still part of a discussion. You know, do we want to include some historic districts uh, as part um, of an MBTA community zone? Um, and it extends really the full length of, of, of Mass Ave. Um, this is the first time we've seen something that looks like this, that isn't um, sort of um, uh, uh, discreetly, um, you know, related to these commercial centers. This is one I think that, that is way more, you know, more of a, a corridor treatment than what we've seen in the past. But again, every one of these maps uh, is iterative. It is based on a specific question um, that was asked either by the working group or you know, by this board. Um, could we model 
uh, larger? Could we model sh uh, smaller? And then what would that look like on the map? So this is really, again, just sort of playing with density, property, staying out of commercial, uh, currently commercially zoned uh, areas, currently industrial zoned areas. Um, and this would be, uh, like I said, our latest iteration, uh, iteration of that map. Um, again, tomorrow night we'll be having a working group meeting to go over, I think, more of the logistics of um, how we are going to, to handle that meeting. There will be a presentation by the working group. We'll talk a little bit more and more in depth about the survey results, um, more of a qualitative kind of um, uh, review and explanation. Um, we'll have you, Teal, talk about you know, the rules, the state prescription um, for this zone. Um, we'll do um, a charrette with some maps. We can have folks you know, start to look at maps, draw on maps, determine you know, is this really, you know, th this is again just a suggestion, just a starting place. Um, is this something that, that, that would work? Um, what do people think? Are there other places we should be thinking of? And that will be you know, sort of a, a charrette exercise and then we'll do a report back. Um, and then that will be the, um, the second public hearing. We will start to move from where the district um, goes to what's in the district, you know, talking more about uh, building size, unit size, you know, things, things like that. But really the, the biggest chunk of this work is looking at the district, determining where it goes, and then seeing, you know, what we can fit um, in there that makes sense in the context of Arlington. Um, so that's the latest I have. Uh, the working group has not seen this drawing yet. It's come to the board and the public first. Um, but I think you know, that you know, we'll be fine with that because these are just a series, again, of draft after draft after draft as we're, as we're zeroing in on um, a zone that will work. Great, thank you very much. Um, I'll take uh, questions from the board members and we'll start with Ken. I want to start off with just saying I had a meeting today, uh, today with um, School, uh, oh, school superintendent. School superintendent. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. Um, uh, the building commissioner, uh, Mike Champa. Um, uh, police chief, uh, Liz. Uh, Julie Flaherty. Judy. Sorry, Liz is the. Yes. Uh, so, okay. Dr. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, a couple of uh, a priest and. Uh, Associate for uh, on the school board. I, I, they, they were flying in and out. <laughs> I presented uh, the previous iteration of this to them, where it was not quite as pulled in as this. It was more uh, as a three-family. They, they did the layout based on the three-family. Since that time, we had made a comment of bringing it in to make it a four or five-story. Or, or six to six to twelve unit buildings, and sucked it in a little bit more, so it was as spread out as it was before. Um, and uh, they had some good questions. Some of the questions they asked was, you know, um, why was it done? Uh, you know, not they, they thought it was all sort of cornered in one zone, and they thought it was all going to be in East Arlington because it had to be close to the, the MBTA. And I explained to him this is not an, uh, not that because we don't meet the criteria where uh, an adjacent town, as opposed to a um, serving town to the MBTA, so it gives us the flexibility to locate it anywhere within the town. That was one of the uh, questions. Uh, the other question was uh, density. Um, you know, is it going to be three three floors or? four floors and so forth. And then the other question they had uh, was, um, how soon was this gonna happen? <laughs> and I said, uh, that's, a, that's a real tough guess, um, but I gave an estimate that zoning usually is for 25 to 50 years in advance from now. So it's not really something maybe we can realize um, in the near future, it's, it's the future of the, of the town uh, that we're, we're looking at. And then I had some questions for them, and I said, how does that fit into your, what, what you guys been helping with? And I said, this would help full if uh, we looked at, this would increase workforce housing. One of their major uh, criteria right now is for teachers, getting new teachers, retaining teachers, is because the cost of living is so high here. 
uh, they can't afford to pay the teachers, or, or not to say teachers, also the workers that work at the school, uh, enough wage to live here. It's the same with the, uh, with the police department. You know, um, even though they have a 15-mile uh, radius from where we are, it's still difficult. And the applicants for the police have always dropped almost half now. So their, their choice of selection is much lower now. Uh, I asked the school uh, if by increasing its density gradually, will this be an issue for schools in the, in the future? And they said, no, we're uh, coming to the bump right now, which is the, the big class right now, the, you know, like the, the top of the peak. Top, top of the peak is going to go through high school in the next couple of years. And then it, it'll be below the peak after that. And they said that they have no problems with that right now uh, because we're sort of spreading it out throughout the town, that they can adjust the buffer zones to which schools go to what, and they feel comfortable uh, the way we have it laid out. It, 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 you know, if we did it all on one side, that doesn't help them. But the way we have laid out there, it does help them in, uh, because they just, they'll just adjust the bu buffer zones, so we're not putting any strain on any one school or any one side of town. And that's what they also, the police, and said, you know, that's not, you know, it's not all concentrated in one area, it's spread out, so they like that. They all see, everybody seemed to like that the most, you know. And uh, that was what happened this afternoon. And uh, we're looking at this, I like this. Uh, I think they're listening to us when we say to suck it in. Um, we're, tr we're trying to put the zones beyond the business zone, so it still allows the business zones along Mass Ave and Broadway to grow uh, or maintain themselves. And they're spreading out, so uh, spaces behind them are supporting that. And I think that's a good balanced growth uh, uh, for this town here. I think by doing that, it would be good. Um, we also talked of a couple locations. One was uh, the church site, St. Camillus. And uh, no one knew where that was <laughs> until I showed them where it was. And they said uh, that they weren't sure that it, it, it would be a good zone area uh, for that right now. They didn't know enough about it. And I said, let's not get into the weeds. I, I'd rather just stay, uh, you know, the big topics for now. As we get more development, I'll be sending them more information. Great. And they're welcome to send, ask me anything they want or just join to one of our meetings. I told them they could, they're more than welcome to come the 8th, and uh, we'll see. <laughs> Thank you for taking those meetings. That's sure. very helpful. Um, before we go on to Jean, I just have a question because I, I just can't see. Does this, sure, sure. Does this, um, does this new plan um, show the districts one lot back from the businesses on Mass Ave? Or is this abutting Mass Ave, the, the sites? And you may not know. I know you just got this plan. Some are. This brand one, new one. one. Yeah, one lot back. And some are right on. Well, it depends sort of where you are. Okay. Most of this new map, Rachel, is, is that exactly how you describe. It is um, one to two parcels back from Mass Ave. I mean, specifically, it's only running along Mass Ave, I think, in this drawing. But yes, it is um, at least one to two removed um, from that um, first uh, band of parcels along, right up adjacent. Great. Great. I'm, I'm certainly glad to hear that. That's certainly one of my highest priorities is to make <laughs> sure that um, we are minimizing, if not eliminating, the number of parcels that actually touch Mass Ave. I so think that we can prioritize the commercial growth in town. We have been using interestingly a 40s a 1940s zoning map which did exactly you know what you're describing yep yeah and um it's interesting i think this one looks a, lo a lot like that map you know so i think this uh you know th like i said it's iterative um you know this uh, this pr the, our final map may not look a lot like this um but i think we are you know getting closer and it'll be interesting to see what the public has to say great thank Thursday. you very much sure. um Gene, any questions, questions comments? Yes, First is, so Rachel and I are not on the committee. Can we attend the meeting on the 8th, or does that violate 
the openness meetings law. And if we attend the meeting, can we participate or do we have to only be we there as observers? Right. Well, this is what I need to know the answer to. I would have to check with uh, Doug Heim and see what we, you know, what each member would have to, you know, do. If we do, if, if it turns out to be a quorum, if you all go, you know, what does that mean? I, I, could and we we ha if, if we post it tomorrow, then we could. Then go, you could. Right? Yeah. So, I think if we could check in with Doug Let me in just the morning, check in that Doug. would be helpful. Great question. Because I, I would like that to go. That is a great question. Too. Yeah. And if I we think just need to observe, we'll that observe, is fine, but, but if, if we can right. participate, that would right. be great. So yeah. much the better. Right. right. Thank you. Right. You're talking about Thursday, right? Yes. Yeah. Not tomorrow. No, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say tomorrow? No. No, no, I, I said. I didn't hear. Oh, I said we would have to post tomorrow that we are having a quorum at the meeting on Thursday. Yeah. If there were open meetings though. Um, thanks for that. So which map or maps are going to be used on Thursday? So I would say at this point, this is the map that will be presented on Thursday. Okay. Um, I think it doesn't hurt to offer the other iterations so people can see how we arrived here and you know, kind of what the terms were. I think it does make some sense to show the map that shows if we were to, you know, here is just, if we did three families across the entire thing, here's what it would look well, like. And yeah. then we start playing, you know. So, I, 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 well, I think any map could be there uh, for comment or to help sort of drive the discussion. Again, no, no map is a, is a final draft at this right, point. Right, so I, um, because when we saw the two maps, a couple of weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. I think we generally like the map that would have met the requirements, not the one that would not. Hmm. The map that didn't have any of the area in a 100-year floodplain. Mm -hmm. So it sort of seems to me that map is a nice contrast to this map because I think it would give people at the meeting a feeling of what happens if you do this and yep. what happens if you do the other one, right? What happens if you use some combination? So, right. That, yeah, I think that would be an interesting way to do it. Right. Um, one of the things I just found out recently, and it sort of surprised me, living in this town for more than 32 years, is the around the corner from my house is a national historic district, and it's not on that map. And then I, I went to, and I went to the National Register. And there, there's another National Historic District in the center, which I don't know if it's coterminous with the local historic districts. And then there are individual properties on the register. And so I think, depending upon whether people think it's a good or bad idea to include the historic district in in this, I won't say what I think, but I, I need, think we need to find the national. We need to designate where all the national ones are also. And I think some of the, I don't remember, but I was looking at it the other day. Some of the properties on Mass Ave, which are not in a historic district, are on the national register. So I think it would probably be helpful to designate that on the map. Um, let me see, what else did I have here? Um, you know, it, I, I thought it was interesting in thinking about what the next steps were, is that I don't think we ever actually told the committee what product we wanted from the committee at the end of the day. I think we said, let's appoint a committee, let's appoint the committee, do a public process, but we didn't really say, I think, what do we want back? You know, do we want this is the one thing we want, or do we want here are two or three different options for the board to consider? Because when we get it, we're going to have to have public hearings, at least one public hearing, and take public comments on whatever we're going to um, um, propose. So we're going to have some independent obligation not to say that's what we got from the committee and we can't change it. So, although I would hope 
it comes in such good form that we don't have to do much, if anything, to it. But I just wonder what we think the product is that we should be getting back from the committee. Could I well, pose that to the committee members? Yeah. Um, I think the committee is um, reaching out right now to the public to see what their thoughts are. Yeah. Okay. They also are aware of what our concerns are too, and they are incorporating that in. And it's not going to be here's the product. There's going to be ongoing meetings throughout the summer where, where we'll have our comments too that adds to it. So it's not just here's the product. All right. There's going to be a dialogue between the two. I rather not give the committee blinders and say here's what you want to look at. I much rather have have them open to look at everybody's uh, comments, including town members, see what they are. They're going to digest it. They're going to take our stuff that we have concerns about. I thought they paid attention to uh, about the commercial zones and everything else. They, they clearly understood that. I uh, said it a few times, but they, they understood it. And we're, we're, we're taking comments. I, I think we're taking comments both ways, and it's not going to stop here. We're going to continue on this. But it just won't be every week you guys be doing it. We're meeting every week. Right, and, and I don't know that that was your question per se. It was more what is the product that will be um, delivered at the end of the day because ultimately we have to form this into a warrant article. And if it's here is um, a proposed map with maybe one or two alternatives in certain areas for this board to hash out. Gene, is that more what your question? Well, that's my question. Right. Yeah. But the well, process sounds like a great process that you just made. One of the things I've, one of the things I've been pushing for is massing studies. So we have coming, I'm not sure it's going to be here tomorrow or not, or uh, for Thursday, is what does a 12-unit uh, massing looks like? What does a 24-unit massing looks like? What does a three-unit mass, three massing looks like? That's one approach based on massing. The other approach is what do we get from a 5,000-square-foot lot? What right. do we get from a 10,000-square-foot lot? Right. And what do we get from a 15? I don't know the exact numbers, okay? So don't quote me on the numbers. Right. But we're it's looking at scales. But right. we're looking at it from both ways. Uh, how does the, how does the lot size dictate the massing or density, and what does the density look like on its own based on what we you know? And then we then we we're, we're going to go next up and apply that to the massing study we already have along Mass Ave, and put that in and see how that works. So that's what I've been pushing for. I'm not sure is it going to go put through yet, but I'm pushing, and I'm hoping that. That will be the process. Um, if you guys are supportive of that process, I will say it's not only Ken saying that, it's the board saying that. And if I get that backing, it helps. I think that's all good. I think we'll save maybe a little bit later whether we end up with just one proposal from the committee or whether we get sort of two or three variations that we can do our own public process on. Yeah, we haven't got there yet. Review. Yeah, but we're, we're far from that right now. Yeah, but that's, I think that will have to be decided some way between now and mid-August or wherever we're going to need to get what we get so we can get it ready for fall town meeting. Yeah. Steve? One, one of... Uh, sorry. I, yeah, go ahead, Steve. I, I've been speaking about that. You're on the committee, too. What do you, what yeah. do you have to say about that? Well, there is um, the effort or the sort of the side project I've been most involved with is uh, going through survey results. So as Claire said, uh, we had 1,033 responses. Uh, there were 2,300 and some odd comments, um, some of which were completely different than the questions that were asked <laughs> and outside of the scope of what we could do for within this, this, the framework that Section 3.8 offers us. But there was also a lot of good ideas and I, I think things that we could sort of focus on. So uh, two of us went through the survey comments and basically coded all of them 
Um, so the idea is to take the specific points, ideas, uh, preferences that were expressed, and then just you know do it, mark them up in a way that could be aggregated. So this will be uh, part of our report, which hopefully will be ready soon. I know the materials have gone out to the board for review, um, but you know there's also it also. I think illustrates some things where we have, um, where we need to do probably a little more education. Um, and also it calls out some of the areas where we'll have to make choices. Like for example, the mo out of all of the survey responses, um, encouraging multifamily housing that meets, that includes sustainability standards or sustainability, yes, sustainability practices was the one that got the most positive response, no matter how you, how you cut it up and look at it. But in terms of a map, there's only so much you can do with that. You can try to reduce car dependency. But a concrete thing that could come into play is, well, we just adopted a specialized stretch code, mm -hmm. and there are extra, there are passive sta house standards. If you have a multifamily home that's over 12,000 square, with more than 12,000 square feet, so do you want to allow that? Affordable housing was another one that came up quite a bit. And you know, as a sort of a decision point, well, affordable means that it will have to be at least a six flex. And will you, you know, is this something that we want to allow by right? Um, so these are like where the first one was just kind of, the first survey was kind of trying to get a, a sense of, you know, people's general preferences and to just help us draw lines on the map. Mm -hmm. um, the next iteration is going to get, I think, more of, okay, so this is what we got out of the first iteration, and now we have some more specific decision points to consider. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm looking forward to going through that uh, in the next coming weeks. Great. Thank you. Gene, any other questions or comments? Yes. I mean, one of the things that I had mentioned some time ago, and I think it would be nice to know the answer pretty soon. It reminded me when Steve said, you know, if you have six plexes, then at least one unit's affordable. Right now, the affordability kicks in when a special permit is required. Well, a special permit's not gonna be required for this, but if you look at 40A, where it allows you to do um, inclusionary zoning, it says when there's a special permit. So I think it would be helpful to have a conversation with Doug mm -hmm. sooner rather than later. And I could do that too, if you like, just to make sure that we're comfortable that if we go with six unit or greater buildings with no special permits, we won't lose the ability to have inclusionary zoning. And what will we have to do if anything, to our bylaw, which right now says you have to have a special permit for inclusionary zoning. So um, I'm real interested in sorting that out sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. Um, Gene, you bring up that point. I was under the impression that inclusion, inclusionary housing is only linked to the number of units. If, it's, if you go over six, one of them will have to be inclusionary. It's not hooked, it's not connected to the special permit. If six uh, if six units were allowed by zoning, then that's fine. But then one of those units still have to be um, affordable, not because it went through. Uh, that's a good question you bring up. I, I I was just interpreting it differently. I you know you could be right and I could be wrong. I I'm relying on my recollection of what's in the bylaw. I mean, I mean, Cambridge figured out how to do it, so. Well, we, well, Cambridge we is a city, so oh, that's yeah, some that's other true. rules. Yeah. Right, so that's something yeah. that I have on our list that we'll need to um, yeah. verify. Yeah, and. Um, so are we gonna verify that, or you want the committee no, to? No, I'd like Doug to no. what, give what, us a Why don't we do this? Review. Why doesn't Jean brought, brought this up and offered to, to track that one down? Why don't we let Jean Track that down together with Claire and Doug and report back at our next That's fine. Meeting. I just want to make sure we're so, asking us so, to do it, the committee. So the, so the zoning bylaw, our zoning bylaw, I just have it in front of me now, 
The affordable housing requirements apply to all new residential development with six or more units subject to environmental design review. So is the word subject to? Yes, so therefore we're gonna have to do something with this and we can't just keep it the way it is. Um, that's why I'd and like to have a conversation with Doug about that. Yeah, sounds good. Good point. Okay. I, I, just, I, I just assumed the other way around. Yeah, I had read that sometime in the distant past and remembered. Let me see if there are any other questions right now. Nope, I think that's it, thank you. Great, thank you. Steve, any comments or questions? Uh, nothing else. Great, uh, thank you, Claire. Did you have anything else to add? Um, so it sounds like as a follow-up from this, Jean is going to follow up um, with Doug Heim regarding the inclusionary zoning uh, trigger with regard to environmental design review. And you had mentioned that you would touch base with Doug yes. tomorrow morning to find out if Jean and I are able to participate or if we need to be bystanders at the um, Thursday evening event. Correct. Great. All right. Anything else? Ken, did you have anything else no. on this topic? Great. All right. Uh, so let's move to agenda item number three, which is the ARB meeting schedule review. And Claire, I will hand it over to you. Great. Thank you. Um, there we go. Um, so I uh, took the opportunity to basically go through roughly every two weeks um, from now to the end of the year, um, skipping Monday holidays to put together a rough schedule um, that you know, should get us through the end of the year, should get us through potentially a, 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 a town meeting. Um, and also our board retreat. Um, so this starting. Package? No, it was oh. not. No, this okay. is just me okay. presenting. Okay, funny. <laughs> um, so uh, June 26, we, we know, will be um, Calix Peak, um, as well as additional discussion related to MBTA communities and answering at least you know the inclusionary zoning question. Um, and then. Um, Potentially on, on the 10th, uh, Calix Peak may come back. Um, uh, hopefully we could uh, get their permit done in an evening, but you know, I'm, I'm certainly uh, thinking it might take more than that. And then after that, we're going uh, basically every two weeks, we skip um, Labor Day. Um, and I think that's the only holiday that we really run into. We do need to schedule our board retreat um, and then identify where the public hearings would be for <coughs> the fall town meeting. Um, I'm thinking if we can get there that August 21st might be a decent day um, to do the, the public hearing or start public hearings for fall town meeting. I'm um, sorry, what, what date was that? That would be August 21st. Um, I am not available. That That is a date now that I'm seeing these dates. I'm not available the 14th or the 21st. Okay. So we'd Good have to, to know. do it on the 28th if we wanted to start in August. Roger that. Make a note on that one. Um, Don't typically we take August off? We do, but we have the fall town, we have fall town meeting. meeting so. And I don't see how we're going to get to it if we don't. Okay. What, what is it, fall town meeting? Do we have dates for when fall town meeting will be? We don't have a date um, yet for fall town meeting. I did speak very briefly with Julie Brazil about it. Mm -hmm. um, when we may be able to schedule. I think we were considering the third week of October. Okay. Um, we have a couple other dates that we probably need to take a look at too. It looks like um, the 25th is Yom Kippur. Okay. Um, that doesn't affect me, but um, if anyone else on the board has concerns about holding it on that date, we okay. are going to need to move that one then. Um, and then the ninth, um, I believe, is a, is a um, hall, it's Indigenous People Day. Okay. So that may be a town hall. Again, I'm happy to meet on that evening, but it may be a town holiday. Okay. Uh, if you could just check on the closure. I believe it typically is. 
rest of the day. Town holiday on 10-9. Okay. And... Is there a reason why the, the retreat is in December? No, I, I'm sorry. This was <laughs> August E, September E, public hearing for a town meeting. It's just columns I'm going through. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I don't need to ease up. These are, no, these are just placeholders because I know generally this time of year is when the retreat happens. And then obviously we have to, you know, lock in um, our public hearing days as they relate to right. uh, the fall town meeting. I would suggest maybe once the other board member is here, we have their retreat, not before. Well, yes, that would make sense. Right, yeah. right. Okay. August is just going to be challenging. Okay. Because I don't have a weekend. The only weekend day in August I can do it is the 27th. And I'm not around on the 7th. 27th? No, the 7th. I'm not here on August 7th. So that date's not going to work either. So it looks like if we want a meeting in August, the only date we could do it is the 28th. The 28th. Unless Tin or Steve. Is that for the retreat or just a meeting? Just a just meeting. meeting. Because I can't do the 14th or the 21st. 28th is fine by me. 28th is fine. Okay. Me too. Okay. Are you going to send something again? Yeah, I was gonna, so I will make these adjustments based on y'all, okay. everybody's notes tonight. Um, and we Thank can go through this, this again at some point. I know that this point. is a Tetris. <laughs> it's tetris -y, but. Tetris, you know. Match. We'll, we'll okay, we so then it sounds like we'll need to start public hearings either the 28th or in the September. 11th. Well, in September. We'll need to be able to vote on the warrant articles. That sounds like probably, we need to work that schedule. I think once we know when the um, fall time meeting will be, we're gonna need to work back to when the warrant articles need to be submitted because we'll need to identify either the 7th or July 24th, probably either uh -huh. August 7th or July 24th is the date when we have the when we review the warrant articles to just to submit them and vote on those and then although we'll I'm need to start the hearings. The, although I'm not here on the 7th. I'm sorry, you're right. So the 24th of July okay. or the 28th of August. But I'm feeling 28th of August will be too late if we're looking at the third week in October. Right. I'm not sure we're going to be ready by the 24th of July, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, it's all going to start compressing I mean we have may have to do on the 28th and then pop in an extra meeting or two in September yep okay so I think if, if we could work with Julie to yes. see if the 28th is when we can review and vote on our the 28th of August is when we can review and vote on the warrant articles that we would like to submit Otherwise, it'll be a month before. Right. And I can certainly follow up with Julie and the town manager about an exact date, Perfect. potentially, for the fall town meeting. Obviously, that's set by select board. But if it's the first week of November, then that's when it is. I think we were look, leaning October because it had something to do with the fossil fuel pilot that we right. want to get involved in. Yep. I am not sure that timeline um, is still on the table. I'll double check with Talia Fox. OK. really tight yep. I mean if it moves to November if that's off the table it would free up a little bit more it breathing room yeah okay. okay understood thank you thank you so I think maybe we even move the retreat back further to like what we have in December just so it gives us more room to to September to December till after town meeting yes because we, sure. we, we just need to spend time focusing yeah. on this. On this. I, I don't, agree. I don't want to. I don't want to. Uh, I would agree. You know. I'm making a note. Yep. Okay. So December for the retreat. Makes sense. Yeah. Before right. the snows fall. <laughs> you know the snow used to fall around Jeez. Thanksgiving. It hasn't. 
<laughs> done it for years. October. We haven't had yeah, Halloween stuff. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments on the schedule review? I think we have more questions than, <laughs> than anything, but um, I think once we nail down the fall town meeting dates for at least a better idea that will um, we'll be in good shape. Right. We'll review again on the 26th. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Because I think we do need to vote correct on the, I think in the past we voted on the schedule date. So if we could maybe clean that up and then we'll, we'll do that on the um, 26th. Got it. That would be great. That's good. Thank you. Uh, and let's jump right into agenda item number four, which is the fall town meeting warrant article discussion. Um, so thank you, Claire, for sharing the documents that we had prepared previously for um, spring town meeting and the warrant articles, which we had identified uh, to push to fall town meeting. And I will turn it over to you. Great, thank you. So. When we uh, first uh, discussed la late last winter which articles we wanted to uh, attempt to advance, the board um, wanted to advance um, to town meeting, we looked at a series of business zoning, um, uh, business changes to the business zoning that would be um, potentially more conducive to uh, business uh, and economic development. Um, and um, you know, make things a, a, a little bit easier uh, for those who are doing commercial development in, Ar in Arlington um, to get through this process. So I just wanted to um, go through these um, with the board, and this could be the beginning of a longer conversation. I don't think we have to make um, necessarily decisions this evening. Um, because we do have MBTA community zoning um, going to a special town meeting, um, do we still or does the board still intend to progress um, all of these articles um, at, at a fall town meeting or should these some or all of these be held for the spring town meeting which will be immediately we will start working on immediately after the fall town meeting um, I think these have are, are far enough along in terms of research and review that we could um, you know, potentially have them on a uh, warrant in the fall. Um, if the board would like to spend um, some more time with these or thinks that you know, maybe some are, are better served uh, being pushed off into the spring, we can do that as well. Um, but I just wanted to at least get started on this conversation. Great, thank you so much, Claire. I agree it's a conversation we need to have given the bandwidth both of the department mm -hmm. as well as the, the board. Um, I thought about this a little bit. I'm interested in everybody's thoughts. My initial thoughts were that um, the first six articles, I believe we are pretty far along with regard to um, documentation. We've identified that these are significant challenges for us as we are trying to work together with businesses um, and developers who are trying to create feasible projects within the business districts um, and are, are discreet enough from each other that with some massing studies, I believe, are digestible. Mm -hmm. My initial thought was that we leave the industrial district. So three of these we have already gone through in Springtown meetings. So the zoning bylaw, zoning bylaw amendment related to the industrial district development standards, the solar bylaw in industrial districts, and the building inspector enforcement. My initial thought was to hold the jurisdiction over the industrial district. And as much as I would love to do it in the fall, the Arlington Heights business district overlay, um, I just don't see how we will have the bandwidth to give this one the attention that it needs mm -hmm. um, in addition to pushing forward with MBTA communities. And I think it's a very, very important um, element that will set the tone for how we work with other business districts in the future. So, so in my 
point of view, focusing on some of these dimensional and site standards that we had initially proposed um, would be what I would prefer to do, but I'm, of course, open to any other um, thoughts. And I'll go to Ken next for your thoughts. I appreciate what you just said there, and I think I agree with you, but we also made, well, let's say I made a, a couple of statements that, uh, that the board is looking at uh, rezoning business districts because mm -hmm. when uh, we're talking about MBTA communities, you know, I said, give us the corridors along Mass Ave because the redevelopment board is looking at those in the business districts. So. I don't want to be saying that we are, and then it's a don't come back and do anything about that. But I understand also, on the other hand, we just don't have the bandwidth to do it right. Um, I'm just a little. Uh, I think the board can certainly make a commitment, much like we did when we did not push these forward at the request of the town manager in Springtown meeting, that these would, we would, we would pursue as many of these as we could for fall town meeting. I personally would want to make a commitment that if we don't push forward with the Heights Business District, um, that we do so in the spring. I'm on the fence. But, I, but I, I completely agree. I'm on the fence. I would love to do this. I'm on the fence. I would this. love to yeah. do this in the fall. I'll have to see what my other board member would say too. Okay, that, I'll just leave it at that for now. Okay, Richard. Great. Gene, I'm on the same fence both of you are on <laughs> about it. I would love to do it this fall. I don't know how we and the planning staff in their current configuration are going to be able to pull off MBTA communities, the other things, and. Um, the Arlington Heights Business District, which I think is a really, really important project, and we want to get it right. I, I will say now, and I'll say it again in relation to some of these other things, that our initial proposal for the Arlington Heights Business District included rezoning quite a number of residential parcels to business. And I'm just concerned that if that MBTA communities map is thinking that it's putting those residential parcels in sixplex or 12plex or whatever the numbers are, units, and then next spring we want to rezone them business, something's wrong. So I think- That's why, Gina, I, 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 I was pushing so hard for them to say, pull back yeah. it from us. So, so I think at least my, perception at this point is it's better to wait till spring but we want to make sure that what goes forward in MBTA communities is not going to conflict with what we want to do with the Arlington Heights Business District which means um, I didn't count the number but there are a whole lot of residential parcels well, oh, some oh, are on Park Ave but a few only a few are on Mass Ave that um, we wanted to make sure they got rezoned business. So, not that many are on Mass Ave, just a few, but I think that's one thing to be clear about. So, while I'm on the fence, I'm falling on the side of let's wait till spring for those, because also what's not on this list is some things that I think we will have to do along with, um, whatever MBTA communities does. So for example, the shade tree bylaw that we put into place last year only applies to things in the business district. If we're going to allow and incentivize in one way or another larger apartment buildings on Mass Ave or Broadway or whatever, we want to amend, I would suggest, the shade tree bylaw so it also applies to those also. So I think wherever MBTA communities comes down, we're gonna have to do a deep dive into the bylaw to see if there are things like that 
solar roofs, things like that, that we want to apply to the larger residential buildings that may be coming. So that's another reason why I think we might want to put off um, Arlington Heights Business District till the spring, because it's going to take a little time to go through here and say, oh yeah, shade trees, mm -hmm. oh yeah, these other sorts of things like that. Yeah, so. Great, Steve? So I, I agree with the chair um, with respect to keeping the first six, skipping the three that we've already done and then leaving um, the jurisdiction over the industrial district and the Arlington Heights Business District for uh, the spring, but make a commitment to take them up in the spring. Um, I, 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 and for the similar reason, it's, I, I think this, I think the Heights Business District is an important set of, an important set of considerations that could set the tone for how we, um, you know, go forward with treating other business districts. I'm also kind of excited that Lexington's village overlay is right on the other side of the town line. And part of me would like to really think about connect, how to connect the two, because right now there's a gap. Um, but yeah, so I'm, you know, conscious of, you know, board members time and capacity and staff time and capacity. And I know we all want to really do a good job with this, so. I want to suggest one other thing that we have talked about, it's not on the list, but it's hidden in here, and I think we should do it this fall, is el eliminate the yes for one and two family dwellings. Just found that in, in my notes too. Mm -hmm. districts. <laughs> so I think yes. we can and should do that this say, fall. Say that again. What was that? Well, well we'll right, right, it now, the board, yes. right now, one and one in two family residential buildings are allowed as of right in the business districts. That has not made a lot of sense to the board for some time. It's a artifact that started in the 1920s around the country uh, where you could build residences everywhere. So, but it doesn't make any sense now to do it when we're looking for larger residential properties. So I would suggest this is the time to add that to the list. It's mentioned in a footnote somewhere in one of these two documents you gave us, Claire. So I'd add that to the list. Right, and we also, at our May 1st meeting, brought that up, that that was one that we wanted to add to the list, right. to remove right. single and duplex and two family um, homes by right in the business district. There was also a footnote around removing a note for um, there being up to three orders for hire in all residential mm -hmm. districts. Um, that we should also strike from the. So with, I seem to remember, and I don't remember if this is at 40A or if it's case law, but every zoning district has to have at least one economic use that's allowed by right. Um, I vaguely remember, but if, Assuming that were true. It's United States Supreme case law. Supreme uh, uh, Court case law. I don't know if it's a case Oh, okay, okay. All right. I do it with some sort of case law. But um, <laughs> it's great to have an attorney on <laughs> who, who's taught land use on the, on the board. But um, I've always, it's always sort of struck me that single and two family homes sort of provided that economic use by right in a lot of districts and in, if we were if we remove that by right and I'm I, I do think that's a good idea it doesn't raise any consequences. it doesn't raise okay cool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rachel can we also then add in I'm not saying for the fall but it could yep. be the spring we also had talked about um, putting in a zoning for eliminating single story um, <laughs> That's in here. Oh. Yep, we have that one in here. That's, um, okay, never mind. Yeah. Height and story minimums in the business districts. Perfect. Okay, I just want to make sure we, but yes, that's, that we can, still in here. We can grab that all and put it in, in the spring if you, if you guys. All. No, that's what we're saying we'll keep in the fall. Because oh. those are discrete. Um, and we have, we have the um, Department of Planning and Community Development has already done quite a bit of research. Yeah 
on okay. these in preparation. So really what's left is the massing studies, um, which we had talked about ensuring that we had the budget and um, uh, consultant to be able to support. And I believe, Claire, that you were working with um, the town manager's office to identify that opportunity. Yes. I, th I think the difficult, I think we should go ahead with the two-story minimum in the business district. What we didn't get to, and it's gonna be um, interesting to write, is what are the exceptions and how to make it work. I think you mentioned that there, but um, I think that will be the more challenging piece of it to do, but will have to be done. Great. Any other comments or um, thoughts on the Warren articles that the board will be moving, looking to move forward for fall time meeting versus spring? I do have one thing to add, Please. and that is that I attended a meeting um, the other night from the Affordable Housing Trust Board. Um, they are looking to, they have recently received some pro bono help to write an affordable housing overlay district that they intend to bring to this board for fall town meeting for review. Um, so that may be coming. I could also um, talk to the board about maybe bringing that item uh, up in a spring town meeting if we think evaluating that sort of overlay is might be too much to do in the fall. Um, but it is on the horizon and I can certainly um, you know, come back with some more information on that or have the chair um, address the board at some point before they really get going. I just wonder what the dynamic would be at town meeting when we're dealing with two different overlays. Mm -hmm. I which, would agree. Which have different purposes but are going to overlap. Mm -hmm. I'm a little concerned that it might be That would definitely push me over the fence one way or the other. Difficult, you know, so it, it may be worth talking to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund about waiting until spring. Yeah, I don't know. I would agree Steve, because. What do you think? Well, um, I had been approached by the uh, Trust Fund's chair to um, collaborate with them on this. Uh, we have, I, th I think we're f our first get together we're having a, a discussion on with with the pro bono council on Friday. So I'll too early for me to have much of a sense of it. <laughs> but if that comes up, I can definitely off, I'm off I'm off the fence, and we got to push it till spring. Okay. It's just yeah. too much. It's just it's just. Good. It, I think it, it's going to be confusing for for people because. I, it's already confusing for people how affordable housing does and does not play into MBTA communities. And then to add that back in, I think, mm -hmm. um, I mean, zoning is, is not something that most of the people at town meeting deal with every day. And I, and I want to be respectful of, of that. And I think that if we looked at that as well as the Arlington Heights Business District, those are discrete. And so those are, to me, you could take both of those up at the mm -hmm. same town meeting yeah. uh, in a way that would be um, much more palatable. Sounds good. Thank you. you. You know, another thing to think about for the zoning overlay is, is what notice is required under our bylaws for that because our bylaws require some interesting notice for a change in zoning. And I'm not sure whether this would be a change in zoning because we're not changing the base zoning, but we're doing an overlay, but it would be worth thinking about and maybe another thing to discuss with Doug, with Doug. a little bit, which I'm happy to do when I talk to him. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Anything else for fall or spring at this point, since we're building our springtime meeting calendar <laughs> too. 
Okay. Thank you all. It's the first of exciting times. It is. Look at all the good work that's getting done. All right. So at this point, uh, we'll move to agenda item number five, which is open forum. So anyone uh, who's joined us this evening is welcome to um, raise your hand if you'd like to speak. You'll be given up to three minutes to address the board. We will typically not respond to comments at this time, but may at a future meeting. And um, you would need to introduce yourself by first name, last name, and address. Rachel, do you want to let Claire do the site for the new group first? Do I skip one of no, the items? That's mine was um, new business. Oh, that's right after yep, this, after right this. after open forum. Thank you. So um, please. And if I could ask you to, to sit over here and speak into the microphone, please. Hi, um, who is this? A good, okay. Um, Susan Stamps, 39 Grafton Street, town meeting member, uh, and uh, a member of the tree committee, and I am still here for the tree committee. I'll, I'll get to as many meetings as I can. Um, I think this is a good time to bring up um, something that we would be very excited about if you guys decided to do this, which would be, and especially might be very appropriate to go hand in hand with doing the MBTA zoning, is to apply environmental design review to all projects in town that go before, um, you know, one way or the other, go before the redevelopment board now. As I say this, I realize the idea of the MBTA zoning is to not, you're not like, you know, asking for a special permit or something, and maybe these projects wouldn't even go before the board. So um, I guess I don't know how that would work, but um, these are conversations that many of us, including some people here, have had about that these environmental design guidelines, they're, it, it's a wonderful set of guidelines and it would be really great if we could figure out a way to um, have everyone doing construction in town up, follow them. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's possible, if we have to make them, actually I, I know now they, they seem to be kind of um, aspirational, they're not, really requirements um, but I, I wonder if there is a way to make them requirements especially if we're talking about a lot more density and it's really important to build in all that you know the various kinds of um, green infrastructure and open space and um, stormwater management and fit see how things fit in with the neighborhoods and such so uh, I would be interested, and I know you're not going to respond, but I would be interested in having some feedback at some point on that topic of is there any way to make environmental design review universally apply to all new construction in Arlington? Um, two things very quickly just to follow up I think that this is an excellent idea uh, as a former member of the residential study group and the design review working group I think that aesthetics are critical to community acceptance they can go a long way towards greasing a lot of these projects that might otherwise not go down so well and I did notice that as you're developing the FAQs for the um, MBTA group that there is a, a section devoted to aesthetics so I was very, very happy to see that. Um, my second comment, this may be more for the MBTA group. I feel like we're a little bit split tonight. But of course I noticed that my street is one of the streets that is in uh, one of the development zones. And you know, we're a dead end with no parking and several houses have no driveways or opportunity and it's already very dense. And I'm wondering how much uh, time will be spent by the community's working group and or members of the ARB to visit every block and street that may potentially be included in these overlay districts. I think it's gonna be very important to, to see these on foot, in person, um, as you're making the decisions about where these will go. So, thank you.
Um, and I'll just note two items. Um, there were some questions about um, when we continued the first item about environmental design review and what it does and doesn't cover. So that might be something that we actually do as an overview before we get into our public hearing at our next meeting. And we can, again, talk about what and why we review certain things. Um, and I think uh, with the other item, um, I think that would be something, we have two members of the um, working group here, and that is certainly something that um, hopefully we can address at the public um, at the public forum. Yep. In terms of, of that, that's not currently um, under the, the redevelopment board's purview until it comes back to us from the, from the working group. Can, so I make thank a, you. can I make a statement? Uh, sure. Um, I, I, I don't want to get too far into I'm that not, particular uh, That's not going to be back and forth. Okay. I'm just saying that I, make them, I made a commitment a while back, and uh, one summer, pre-COVID, I walked up and down Mass Ave and visited every single business and marked it up, stating it, it was, a two, was it a two-story, one business, it was a business open, uh, what kind of business it was, and I classified it all into a chart. So there is a commitment on this board to actually see all the neighborhoods and see all that stuff. Steve also took his bicycle, right? I haven't looked. I've rode every street all street on the old maps, but, but you rode. But you rode, mm -hmm. rode every street. So I just want to state that we do make a conscious effort to do all the stuff, and it's, it's not taken lightly. I also want to say something. Okay. So. Look at what Claire's going to talk about on site plan review, because that's something we can do for MBTA communities. And the other thing that we can do, as I talked about with the shade trees, is change some of the zoning bylaws so it applies to everything. Because under the guidance for MBTA communities, if something applies equally to MBTA communities and other things, it's going to be OK. So look at what she's talking about or coming up to talk about for site plan review. And for Winnell, yeah, I would just say that I hope, but I don't know, but I hope there's going to be an opportunity for every property owner who's in the overlay to be able to come in and say something. I hope, but I'm not on that committee. <laughs> well, everybody is invited to the public forum, too, on the 8th. So hope that you will come and participate and encourage your neighbors to do so as well. It's not the last meeting either. It's nope. just the beginning. One of many public meetings. Yes. Okay. Um, seeing no other members of the public joining us this evening, I'll close open forum and move to item number six, new business. And uh, Claire, I'll hand it over to you. Great. Thank you so much. So <clears throat> as promised or as threatened, um, I thought I would come back to the board um, with a little more um, information about site plan review, how it relates to MBTA communities, um, and what we're allowed to do. Um, so MBTA communities does allow for site plan review of varying levels. Administrative site plan review means that the site plan review is done completely by the staff. Um, there are other um, iterations of site plan review throughout the Commonwealth with different boards that are um, involved um, at different levels. Um, a site plan review is not discretionary. Um, it is not a special permit. It is not a regulation of use nor a pro or a prohibition. This is an evaluation of a project that is allowed by right um, with um, you know reasonable conditions and reasonable comments that are able to be made on on various. Um, topics. Um, what we can't do, um, it's, it's interesting, it's, it's pretty similar to, uh, you know, the reviewing sort of a, a, a cannabis facility or something like that. We cannot determine whether or not the use is allowed um, or make discretionary decisions, requirements outside of, of zoning, or, or put unreasonable binding conditions on a project. So were we to look at a project that was Project X and the board decided, well, Project X is going to need you know, 15 parking spaces and thus renders, you know, this is somehow outside of zoning and it renders the project unbuildable. That is not something we are allowed to do. Um, what we can do is look at project impacts. Um, 
determine compliance with zoning and other applicable requirements such as EDR um, and determine the condition um, of approval. Um, we don't currently have technically a planning board in Arlington, although it does say in several instances of the, the Town Manager Act and in a few of the um, ARB rules and regulations um, that the um, redevelopment board acts as, as the planning board in the town of Arlington. Um, the town will ultimately decide the body uh, that has site plan review authority. This may be something that needs to be at town fall, uh, fall town meeting, um, that the town meeting would vote to give that authority to the ARB. Um, but more often than not, it's the planning board. Um, if a project requires a um, variance, uh, occasionally they will kick that to the Zoning Board of Appeals, which is the only body um, that can issue uh, an official variance. Um, and like I said before, it can be purely um, administrative, uh, which oftentimes is better for smaller projects, um, just because you know the town evaluates uh, these projects um, regularly. Um, you know, uh, engineering office, DPW, police and fire, uh, DPCD, we all get together to sort of look at these projects um, even before they go in front of the redevelopment board unofficially. Um, so uh, this is just generally a list of things um, that can be uh, reviewed by the body. Um, I think right now, um, if this were a project that was um, going in, in front of the ARB, it would include um, evaluation and comment on all of these items. Um, but were we going, were we to delegate, um, you know, some of the, uh, the responsibility review to administrative departments, it could look something like this. The ARB would still um, weigh in on landscaping, screening, buffers, signage, uh, those sorts of things. But I think what we're really looking at is the architectural style and scale. We can evaluate um, projects or the, um, the site plan review body can evaluate projects um, you know, based on all of these different variables, but also including architectural style and scale, so long as there is a process and so long as we have, um, you know, some, uh, some uh, published or prescriptive um, document that talks about what we're looking for. We can't automatically say, you're going to put in a 12-unit building, we, you know, we, it has to look like, I don't even know what, like, you know, some Breuer fantasy, yes, right. or it has to be brick. Um, the good news about that is we do have um, our residential design guidelines, um, which we could, you know, potentially use as, um, uh, you know, just basically, you know, guidelines for review. Um, they're already out there um, in the public sphere. Um, you know, really lets uh, a developer or a homeowner or somebody know what exactly it is. Uh, we're looking for in terms of design um, across all neighborhoods. Um, so the ARB could certainly be a design review board. Um, the Historic uh, Districts Board is a design review board. Um, they would maintain their ability to review design in historic districts should um, some section or some chunk of the MBTA community zone extend over a historic district. There would still be design review, um, maybe at two levels at that point in the site plan with the ARB or a planning board, um, and also with the Historic District's um, Design Review Committee, however they go about their process. Um, Jean is right. These are all things that we are going to need to put in as the evaluation procedure for um, you know, projects that are built under MBTA communities. And I think what we should start to hash out now and what I'd like to bring back to this board is a proposal um, that you know, for, for a criteria for evaluation of projects in MBTA communities. And I'm wondering, I think, you know, some of the questions that we should consider are, is there a project um, or, or would there be a scale of project where this board or other boards or the public even would feel comfortable with administrative site plan review? We do some right now with signage. You know, if signage meets certain conditions and does certain things, we can um, approve, I can approve that administratively in the office. Um, if there's you know, questions or you know, they want to do something different or outside of the dimensions that are related to signage, then it should go in front of the ARB. That's obviously not um, you know, a decision that can be made in-house with staff. So you know, under what conditions, um, 
is this a, an internal review? Under what conditions? Is it an external review with the ARB? Um, you know, who, how, just generally, how does the community feel comfortable um, looking at, at, at these sorts of projects? Um, is it a, uh, you know, I have, I'll throw this out there, I have long wondered if it made sense, um, since our inclusionary zoning kicks in at six units, if it made sense to have six units the ability to be built by right, um, maybe with some kind of expedited, uh, excuse me, expedited design review, either internally with staff, quickly with the board, something like that. Um, but again, all of these, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, Susan was saying earlier, I think all of these need to be um, taken under consideration, um, you know, th this, this, I think really great opportunity that we have to do site plan review without saying no, um, which will get us uh, projects that are, you know, more, more contextual and better for the community, um, while still with the understanding that, you know, these folks do have the right to build um, what it is that they're looking to build. Um, so just uh, really quickly, I think just as a, my sort of opening, um, you know, address to the, to the board and others, um, this is something that I would like to, to bring back, I think, uh, a little more definitively um, with some recommendations and have the board discuss not on the 26th, but maybe on July 10th. Sounds good. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. yeah um, so site plan review says that we cannot say no to the project. What what gives you the uh, the stick to enforce any of those things that's there? Can we just delay it or how? Let's say we have a, dis a, a disagreement in landscaping and screening. We want the landscaping to be there and screening to be able to act as a buffer for the parking system. And they say, no, that uh, doesn't make sense for them. I don't know, what, I'm just picking a bad example. Sure. But, and they say, no, what's, how, how do we mitigate that? I, you know, I, I would have to look at it. I think more, I think generally what happens with developers is they come in and want people to be happy about their project and want people to be supportive of their project. Um, if what we want is landscaping, screening, and buffers, then we need to draw that. And we need to make sure that that is somewhere prior to coming into this board, um, there is some sort of um, you know, dimensions, prescriptive treatment um, that, uh, that the proponent could aspire to. So it can't be capricious and new the requirement it has to be based in some sort of a that's um, correct an existing standard and uh, we do let's say we do have that mm -hmm. and let's say i think our zoning says that a parking lot cannot shine cars can't shine into other people's property mm -hmm. so that is that's right part of our zoning so uh, that's right and that condition would carry through um, that would be just, you know, because someone is allowed to do something by right does not mean that they're not subject to zoning or to some of the other dimensional requirements or, or some of the other items that come up in the zoning bylaws. So, so it, enforcement then is, is put back onto ISD. ISD. Yes. No, it's taken off of us and moved on to ISD now. Correct. Okay. Just, I just want to see where that was. But by coming in front of this body, we are highlighting to ISD what needs to be, um, what needs some extra attention and review as they finalize their plans. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I have no problem with ISD taking this on. I just didn't know where the stick was. Gene? Um, I've been thinking about this, and there's probably a size of project, I don't know if it's three family or four family, that probably doesn't need to come to the board. But then I started thinking, well, if somebody thinks they can build a three or four and they don't do site plan review, then they might do that rather than a six mm. where they have to go through site plan review. So how do we do something that doesn't provide an incentive to people to build smaller than we want them to build? And I think one possible way to do it is to have staff administrative review of let's say you know three and fours and the board do everything bigger than that right. um, and like we do with signage if the staff says i'm not sure about this for the 304 i'm gonna kick this over to the board to look at it 
we've then made some sort of division mm -hmm. and yet haven't set up something that provides an incentive for people to build small because they escape any sort of review whatsoever. And I, I actually like us doing the site plan review rather than the ZBA, mm -hmm. unless something requires a variance, right. in which case it should probably be there so they don't have to go right. um, to both places. I, in terms of, of these things, I think that we could probably do all of them except stormwater management mm -hmm. and water and wastewater systems, and really all we would need is DPW to just sign off on them before it gets to us, you know, right. and says that they've looked at it and those are fine, and then we can look at the rest. The, the other thing that I like about site plan review is the public can be there. Yes. The public can say this is what works for us. You know, if you have two or three choices, this is the choice that we like the best. And I'm a believer in public process. Mm -hmm. So I think having this and having it before the board has an advantage for that way too. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment about these things. Great, thank you, Gene. Steve. As it happens, over lunch, I was reading Lexington Zoning Bylaw to understand how they did site plan review. Um, they, if I recall correctly, they make a distinction between major site plan review and minor. Major is done by their planning board, minor is done by staff, and there's a threshold that delineates the two. But, um, you know, for the most part, there, were a, there was a list of factors that, you know, were fair game for consideration, not unlike the list you showed earlier. Um, it's, I, I, I think we can, it seems, like a, it seems like a useful tool in a sense of providing a way to give feedback to an applicant and to set expectations, but without, um, you know, per, without introducing excessive risk or delay. So I, you know, I, I plan to look at more, as, more how other communities have been doing this and look forward to talking about how we can do it here. Um, Claire, is that something that we should, it sounds like, keep on our list for the fall as well? And would that be potentially part of the suite of MBTA communities pieces, or are you envisioning that as a standalone? I think it, I was going to say as part of a suite, and then I immediately second guessed myself. I think I would have to look at it a little more That's closely to fair. see. Um, it, it, we absolutely sh should do it at the same time. Okay. Whether they're separate articles or not, I, I don't know. Great. Okay, so site plan review, process and standards. Yes. Great. Any other questions for Claire on this item? Any other new business? Oh, I was going to give you all an update on hiring. Um, we are making an offer to a new economic development coordinator. I, um, <laughs> I interviewed uh, three finalists last week. They were all spectacular in their own ways. Um, and uh, I, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was, there were some great interviews. It was uh, me, Jim Feeney, and Beth Locke um, who were looking at the candidates. So we'll be making an offer to one of them. Um, and you know, if not them, then the other two are, are, are excellent as well. Um, I have posted the assistant director position just about everywhere I can find. I encourage others, you know, if you are uh, linked in with me or, or on the town website, please uh, share widely. I think we all know we have some pretty big shoes to fill, um, but I'm, I'm really encouraged by um, the interest that I've seen so far in what I've posted so far. So. Um, we're just at the beginning of the process. I think the position's only been open well, less than a week, um, but I do uh, hope to hire the right person very soon. Um, and Great. that's it, that's the update on hiring. Fantastic. Any other new business? All right, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So motioned. And second? Second. Take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean. Yes. Ken. Yes. And I'm a yes as well gavel. Uh, <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs> Thank you.